Are you curious what it might look like to work with Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus in The Chosen? Or maybe I've got some Marky Mark fans in the Possibility Mom universe. If you're curious what it's like to work with talent like these two, as well as what goes on behind the scenes at the Hallow app, today's podcast is for you. So I'm back. I took an unintentional, completely unintentional break from the podcast, meaning that the first week there was like a doctor's appointment that I couldn't reschedule. Second week, one of my kids got sick and I had to drop everything. Third week and so on and so forth. Like it was absolutely not a planned hiatus from the podcast. I am very happy to be back here with you at a unique time of 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm so happy to be back here. I've missed you all. Let me know how you are doing. If you are watching this live, let me know how you're doing. And a big hello if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube or if you're listening to this after the fact, wherever you love to listen to podcasts. It has been the lentiest Lent over here. <laughs> it has been the lentiest Lent. If you have been following me over on Instagram at Lisa Canning, I've shared that we've just been going through, again, just more unique things where the Lord is very clearly inviting me to surrender. And how timely that the Hallow app invited my husband and I to share a story of surrender. We shared our story of mental illness in our marriage and what it looks like to carry that cross together. For those of you who have been my, in my world for a while, Oh, hold on. Hold on, everyone. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. I purposefully put these. Can you all hear me? Let me know. Pretty sure. I'm <laughs> pretty sure you can hear me. Maybe. Let's try that again. If you've been following me for a while, you know that mental illness has been a big part of our journey. It came into our marriage around 2012. He, my husband had been diagnosed with um, depression and anxiety prior to that, but I had not noticed it or, or it did not present itself so obviously in our first few years of marriage. And so um, it was such an honor to share our story on Hallow. I'm so incredibly grateful for the opportunity and I'm so grateful for all of you who have gotten in touch. Like I have, it's been remarkable and I feel um, I honor your story. So many of you have gotten in touch with me about either this is something that you also struggle with in your own marriage, or you love someone like a child or a friend who struggles with mental illness. And so just know I'm doing my very best to get back to everyone's messages, but solidarity, you're not alone. And of course, we can all be strengthened. Like the load is made lighter truly when we are carrying the cross together. And of course, a time of recording, we're moving into Holy Week. This is a beautiful time in the season of our um, church calendar. And my invitation is if you have not yet listened to our surrender story, go over to Hallow. You can get it for three months free using my link, hallow.com slash Lisa and listen to the story, listen to the other stories of surrender. It is a truly remarkable um, series that's happening right now. So invitation for you for the month of Lent or for the conclusion of Lent. Today on the podcast, I'm bringing on a very special invitation, a very special individual who I feel like I have gotten to know because I've listened to a few podcasts. It's kind of fun when you're interviewing somebody that you haven't met yet, or you just haven't really gotten a chance to interact with. I really enjoy sleuthing on the internet. I'm a very good internet spy, everybody. Okay. Just be warned. I'm a very good internet spy. So meaning I just really love learning about people. I love, love, love getting to know people's stories. And so if someone has been on a podcast, I will try and find, you know, where they've been. And so that I can ask interesting, informed questions here on, on the podcast. And Taylor Buckley, whew, 
we've got an incredible story today. Taylor does a few things at Hallow. I'm going to let her introduce, but she is the person who regularly interacts with people like Jonathan Rumi from uh, The Chosen, Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are around my age, understand the reference Marky Mark. Um, and many other very well-known individuals in the Catholic space. So I'm so excited to bring her on to the podcast and talk about just the behind the scenes of Hallow, how um, Hallow is very different, uh, what's unique about Hallow. But what I'm hoping you're going to gain from this is two things. Number one, Taylor's lived a lot of life, so she's going to share with us a little bit about her life. But for those of you in my audience who are business minded, who are running businesses in the margins of your motherhood, just pay attention to what you can apply into your own storytelling, into your own public relations. Borrow from what some of the best practices are at Hello. And that is my hope for this podcast that you can start thinking about. I find it interesting to look at very large established entities like Hello. Hello has a million plus, like so many people engage with this app. I really like looking at businesses that have found success and then what obviously can I glean? What can I implement? What can I um, put into my own businesses? E even if it doesn't look exactly the same, even if there aren't a million people listening to me, what can I immediately implement as a result of learning from these larger companies? So before we bring Taylor on, I have a very, very special thing to share with you. If you have not yet, like if you're kind of thinking, gosh, it's the end of Lent, Holy Week is coming, oh my word, and you haven't yet engaged in your almsgiving, okay? If you have not yet engaged in almsgiving, I want to encourage you to prayerfully discern donating to the Guiding Star Project. We have right now an amazing match challenge where a donor has come forward, a group of donors actually has come forward with a $10,000 match. And at the Guiding Star Project, we have this passion. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm the president of this um, beautiful network of healthcare centers in the United States, where we have a vision for a future where no woman fears pregnancy. I'm going to say that one more time. We have a vision for a future where no woman fears pregnancy. And we recently did, you can look right here on, on um, no, sorry, not right here, on Guiding Stars YouTube, just search Guiding Star Project on YouTube. We recently did a beautiful evening where we talked about what the future would look like. What would women need to feel supported? What would women need in a healthcare provider? What would women need in the in terms of childcare, in terms of um, help with her children, mental health, physical health? What would women need in place in society to not fear pregnancy? And I am so passionate about some of the things that are coming out. I'm so passionate about this vision of a future. Think about that for a minute where no woman fears pregnancy because she knows she has support. I have become so convicted about what this could look like and how Guiding Star centers, how birth centers, how medical centers, health centers, the role that they have to play in that vision of an America where no woman ever fears pregnancy. We've got this $10,000 match. Please do not like let this money like get left on the table. And the match, it's an interesting one. 40 new monthly donors. You can give $5, $10, $25, whatever your family's budget will allow. 40 new monthly donors, any amount. So whatever works for your family, I would invite you to prayerfully discern what can you do? Maybe there's a little bit of almsgiving that you didn't get to do during Lent because you kind of forgot about it or what have you. My invitation, guidingstarproject.com slash donate and help us not leave $10,000 on the table. All right. 
Everybody, I want to you will welcome. Please help me welcome to the podcast Taylor Buckley, who is the lead influencer marketing genius. I don't know. I'm going to let her correct her title at the Hello app. Taylor, welcome. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I am pumped and I am grateful that you are here because you are 6 a.m. your time and I, I am. am so blessed that you got so early to spend some time. So Taylor, for anyone who might not know you, please share a little bit about who you are and what you do at Hello. Yes, absolutely. Funnily enough, I'll have some people come up to me, like, especially at like Catholic events, right? And be like, oh, like you're Taylor from Hallow. Like I've seen you on Jonathan Rumi's Instagram. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm like famous for appearing on Jonathan Rumi's Instagram. But um, no, I'm the, uh, you were talking about the title at the, technically my title is director of influencer and brand marketing at Hallow. Um, so I've been in Hello for almost four years now. And yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. I do a lot of work with our content partners. Um, everyone from Jonathan to um, Mark and then Jeff Cavins. And I mean, we've, we've done a little work together. So everything on the marketing end um, and then oversee a little bit on the social media side. So yeah, but having been at Hello for so long since a very early stage of the company, I just have a lot of knowledge of all the things that have happened in between. I think when I first started at Hallow, we had like 400 and something Instagram followers and now we're at over 700,000. So it's been quite, it's been a journey. <laughs> okay, so speaking of journey, because my the listeners are going to want to know what is Jonathan Rumi really like, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. Taylor, you have a beautiful story of your own journey of the Catholic faith and coming back to the Lord and finding truth and goodness. And you have a beautiful story about the rosary. Can you share with us just a little bit about your own journey of Catholicism and your own walk with the Lord? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, I'm a convert to Catholicism. So I converted when I was in college. I always had like a very close relationship with the Lord. I was, I grew up Nazarene. And so I feel like I, I, I sang in the church band and always like went to church camp every summer. And so um, I always, and, and I think this is like an advantage. My husband and I, we both teach um, like religious ed and we laugh because we like kind of co-teach and he is a cradle Catholic and he's just very much like he's super intellectual. And so like does great at like teaching the intellectual parts, but then I can come in and I'm like, I'm more like the heart. And I think that's a, that's a woman too, right? Like we are the heart, but I think as somebody who grew up with a Protestant background, like it was all about like the love of Jesus. Like I didn't really have to struggle with that. I struggled a lot with like the theology as becoming a Catholic. So, um, but yeah, so I converted in college, very lackluster uh, catechesis, did not understand the faith at all. I strictly converted because of the Eucharist. Like I have such a love for the Eucharist. I had gone to church with my grandma when I was in high school. And I remember the priest saying like, hey, if you're not Catholic, like you can't take this. And afterwards, like didn't understand. And I asked her about it and she told me, you know, like why and like what the meaning is behind the Eucharist. I'm like, well, I believe that. Like I, I, I'm on board with this. Um, and so that was just sort of like a little seed planted by the Holy Spirit that then when I got to college, I went to Notre Dame and mass was such a, like it, it's a part of the culture. And so every time I was going to mass, I'm like, I still want this thing. I still want this thing. I don't care about all the other stuff. Like, this is what I want. And so I went through RCIA, not a great program, um, but, you know, I was able to become Catholic and started that journey. I was not a great Catholic, I would say, for a good chunk of my life as one. Um, it, I just didn't know. I was one of those people that was like, oh, OK, well, I believe like this one thing, but like I don't totally subscribe to this thing or like that's cool for you. And I think it was more just like I didn't know and I didn't realize like where the truth came from and like how it all came from the early church. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, when my, my husband and I got married, uh, you know, went on with life when it was like 2019 and like into 2020, I was going through a really, really hard time. I was a co-founder of another startup. Um, it was a really bad like co-founder relationship. It like, there was just like so much darkness in my life. Um, my grandpa in like early 2020 and this like pre COVID got really sick and I was very close with him. Um, and I just was like super angry with God and 
um, that continued, you know, like through the start of COVID. And then once COVID happened, it was during Lent of that year. And so churches shut down and we decided to give up non-religious television um, and watched a series on forum called Symbolon with Dr. Edward Shree. And it like, it, it was one of the things that changed my life. Um, there was, there was a number of things, right. I was in like a women's group with some girl from high school who like also converted and then like joined the military. And there was all these like really strong, like Catholic women in that group. And so, and then watching the show and then, but I'm still like in this place where I'm like, okay, I, I'm starting to believe this. And, but I'm like, I don't have the words for God. Like I don't, I'm, I'm mad. Like my grandpa, he passed away in this time. And, um, I, I was like, okay, I, I'm really angry. I don't know what to say, but I know I need to say something. And I remember hearing about the rosary in RCIA, weirdly not learning how to pray it. And so I Googled, like, how do you pray the rosary? Because I do love, like, repetitive prayer. Um, and so I stumbled upon an, an article about Hallow. And this was, like, very early on when, like, the rosary was, like, one of the 10 pieces of content we had. Uh, downloaded the app, started praying with it. Um, and it changed my life. And the founders also had gone to Notre Dame. So we connected on LinkedIn. They were hiring for the first marketing position at the time. Um, I quit my other startup. I applied for the job and I mean, glory to God, like I got it. And it's been, I mean, for my own faith, like most people don't like understand the inner workings like or see the inner workings of hallow like they read so much about us online whether it's good or it's bad but like the uh, the faith and the discernment and the trust of like the leadership of the company is unlike anything i've ever seen um and so i mean it's just been such a blessing to kind of like be in this journey with um, them and to be able to impact so many users, users lives. And so I, yeah, I mean, I started off in like a very broad marketing role and then um, kind of fell over time, like into the partnerships, into the partnerships avenue. So yeah, that's my like faith journey. And then also like my hallow journey. And it's been so beautiful for our marriage too. I feel like my husband as a cradle Catholic, like wasn't super strong in his faith either. And like seeing me grow so much, like in my faith through both, you know, prayer and then the work that I'm able to do um, has also, you know, he's done Exodus 90 now twice. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been so beautiful for our family and you can see like the fruits in our kids and yeah, just really grateful to God. Give us a little bit of a sense of what that discernment looks like. You mentioned that at Hallow, there's quite a bit of discernment that goes on behind the scenes. So. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What does it look like at a staff meeting, at a yeah. board meeting? What does it look like in terms of the decisions you make for content? Give us just a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, this so this week we had um, some in-person meetings. We get together about twice a year in person. Uh, most of us are actually remote. So Hallow is like a super family-friendly culture. Like we all live where we live. We have really flexible schedules. Like um, family always comes first. We work really hard, but we also are, you know, devoted to our families and our primary vocations, right? Like this is none of our primary vocations because it's a company. We're not priests. We're not nuns. Like we're wives and mothers and single people, but like it, this is not it. Um, and this week, like we had these in-person meetings and every single day they brought in a priest and we had mass like in an office in a high rise in Chicago, at least 60 people on their knees, like worshiping God, like at a mass, um, you know, receiving the Eucharist. Then we had confession. Like it, it was like a primary thing. It was an important thing. Like, yes, we had a lot of work to do and a lot of things to talk through for planning and stuff, but like we took an, you know, an hour and a half out of the day to do mass, to give people space for confession, which was great because it's Lent. Um, and so like that, that's like one. Th so every meeting starts with, you know, a time for what could be prayer. We how, like the team itself is not all Catholic. There are many of us who are Catholics, but there's a lot of Christians on the team um, as well. And so, you know, most meetings start off with the moment of silence. We, um, you know, and the, the founders themselves, like before any major, especially major, but even like small decisions like every, like they're praying about it. Most of us, like when we're with, even with like big con with big content partner, um, 
decisions, there's a lot of prayer and a lot of discernment and conversation and leaning on, you know, we have like an entire advisory team. That's like a kind of a spiritual advisory team with Bishop Rhodes and um, Father Steve at Word on Fire. And so there's both like the discernment of the pr- of prayer and then there is you know like leaning into these spiritual advisors who are you know way more experienced and uh knowledgeable about the the faith and the truth and so um yeah i mean there's just there's so much it's it's interwoven like it, it, we do 100 percent live what it looks like out there even if people like want to think it's not like that <laughs> everyone always has something some opinion I love it. So you work with pretty big personalities who I imagine also have incredibly uh, challenging schedules and teams and all the things, right? So it's not it's not simple, I think. My impression is it's not simple what you do, what you coordinate. How do you remain peaceful? You're a mom. Uh, how old is your child? I have three. Oh, you have three. Oh, my gosh. How old are they all? Um, my oldest is going to be seven in July. My youngest is about to turn, or my middle is about to turn three. And then my youngest just turned one in January. Oh, so much fun. All right. So, you know, you've got the needs of your family. You've got the needs of your husband. You've got the home, like home, like normal, like laundry and all the things. And you, I am sure have to sometimes be a bit flexible to accommodate the schedules of these very high profile individuals. So how do you remain peaceful in all of that? Yeah. Um, I mean, prayer, obviously, uh, I do, I use, I still use the app a lot. (laughs) Um, and so, you know, doing that, but, uh, I mean, my husband is like a saint. He is, you know, I travel a lot. That's actually like it, it less on the flexibility and more on the, on the travel. Um, I travel quite a bit. And so, uh, we have a ton of help. And I think that's like one thing um, is not being afraid to ask for help. I'm a person who does not like to ask for help. And I've had to learn through all of this that like I have to surrender like my own pride about asking for other people's help and um, get some help because it's not for me. I'm like, this isn't fair for him. Um, You know, it's not fair for the kids. But and I try never to go to travel more than like two nights, like sometimes it'll have to be three nights, but I really try to limit the number of time, amount of time. And then when I'm home, I'm home, like, you know, I and and that's the beauty about Hallow and and because I travel and there is a good bit of work in this end of it. um, I have a, a little more flexibility to pick up my daughter at school and hang out with her for an hour before, you know, I take her to like whatever activity or something that she has and then also try to be really present with them when they're home. Um, but I mean, yeah, for like the piece too, there's an element of it that like, I, I couldn't do this with like a secular job, I don't think. Um, but like knowing, or at least leaning into, um, what I know is happening for our users. And I think this is applicable to anyone, even in a secular job, right? Like there is a deeper mission and like, whether it's a coworker, like that you're helping, or someone on the internet that you're helping, there's uh, there's somebody who's being impacted by the work that you're doing, no matter how big or small that work is. And f- m- focusing on that, like that's the reason for what you're doing. It's it's not, you know, and, and then, yeah, being present with my family when I can. I, I think you know, I'm, in a, I'm in an interesting season where I feel like the Lord is hitting me over the head with, I want you to be present wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Just prior to this, I was on with my spiritual director and I was kind of complaining, to be honest. I was like, no, Father Damien, like I'm such a good multitasker. I can get so many things done. Why is the Lord asking me to like kind of stop doing that? I was complaining. And he just was like, multitasking can be literally a block, like literally like a blockage from receptivity. Like when you are constantly multitasking, you aren't really able to receive. And so he was really challenging me to be just truly present in the place that I am. And I feel like that's kind of what you're saying. It's like when you're home with your kids, when you're with them after school, you're with them. And then when you're traveling, you're, you're doing the things that you know are going to benefit Hallow. 
And, and, and keeping that mission, I think, is such an important lesson because it can help to when you do get the inevitable human reactions of guilt, of frustration, of this didn't work out, oh, I forgot this, like human, these are all very just normal, like life is not meant to be easy, right? Like our attachment to easy, I think, can sometimes get us in trouble, or at least it gets me in trouble. But just to be truly present where you are, I think it is really fascinating. Okay, I want to... I want to ask you for some stories if you'll, you know, if you'll allow, because what's Jonathan Rumi like in real life? What is Jesus from the chosen like, like in real life? Yes. Well, he's very humble and he does not like to be um, seen as Jesus. <laughs> so, um, but no, yeah, he's, he's wonderful. Um, just like, I mean, you you see glimmers of it, right? Like on social media, when other people share stuff about him, but he's just a very genuine um humble kind person who is passionate about like his craft like as an actor he's a very very good actor he's also a great voiceover artist he's really funny will be in the studio sometimes and he'll do like voices for other um you know like funny voices for people so yeah i mean he, he's he's wonderful um and it's just such a blessing to be able to work with him i mean we've been with him since kind of like almost before the chosen really took off um and so to watch like what's happening in his life and um you know the success that he's having but also the the people who are being changed by the show like i mean we love the show we work with lots of actors on the show we love and the show itself um we're huge supporters of so yeah it's it's been it's so beautiful and he's a wonderful person um you know i, I wish i could spend more time with him but he you know filming and stuff is busy so <laughs> so Let's talk a little bit about marketing. And it, it seems to me that Hello does a really good job of leverage, right? So you, you, you've got these incredible personalities that many people like, know, and trust already. Talk to us a little bit about, maybe even specifically about Prey 40. Like what are some yeah. best practices that happened uh, in the storytelling and getting people excited about Prey 40? Yeah, so we've, um, I mean, when I first came on, it was very early on that we realized that partner, you know, an influencer, if you'd like to call them that, like relationships and marketing really worked for us. Um, it was, you know, finding people who were trusted um, by their community and it, and it's grown, right? Like we started off in more of like just a Catholic influencer space and then kind of got like a little broader. And then now in like the celebrity space, and we still have a ton of Catholic influencers too, that we work with because there's an element of trust there, right? Like, and uh, what we try, one of the things that I'll say we try really hard is genuineness. Like I, I write a lot of the scripts for people and you know, we go, just like you said, you go, you like went, go through podcasts for guests. Like we go through, you know, what are they posting and like, what did their, what does their voice sound like? And the content team does this too, like to try to say, okay, how would they say it? Because to us, if it's not genuine and if it doesn't feel that way, then it definitely doesn't work. Um, and so it's, it's trying to match like their voice to, you know, the, all the things we're writing. And then we're very intentional about the people who we bring in to content and curating this like experience. So it's been really fun to see over the year, Pray 25 and Pray 40 are our two biggest community challenges. We have community challenges throughout the year, but they're definitely our two like big ones. Um, really Pray 40 this year started off with He Leadeth Me. That was it. Like Alex, our CEO, he's like, the, and, and funnily enough, when we were a little smaller, Alex gifted us all this book. Like, two or three years ago um and, and i mean this book like changed a lot of our hearts and lives and minds and if you haven't read it i could not recommend it more um but alex was like okay lent is going to be he leadeth me like that's it and so then it was a matter of okay who would be like really good with this um you know i think we have like core guides for lent as we'd say like jonathan's you know, he's a core guide for like Pray 25 and Pray 40 and then other stuff in the app. You can hear him for almost everything. Um, and then we had Father Mike, who um, I think it was it last year, also did his homily series. Like weirdly enough, like we like didn't ask him to do it. He just did it. It was like this. I think it was the seven last words. And like his homily series was like the same thing we were going through for Lent, which was so crazy. Um, and then Sister Miriam and um mark who like is 
you know, Mark lives a lifestyle that like most of us can only dream about. And so like, you know, he wakes up at 4 a.m. Like he, he, and he does, like he lives it, like I've seen it. Um, and so he's like great to encourage like the fasting and like the more discipline that you do need in Lent. Like it, it's easy, especially as a mom. And I was, I've been pregnant for like the last, I was pregnant or nursing for like the last three years. And I think I got lazy in Lent because I was like, oh, I'm like pregnant. I don't have to like fast and I'm nursing and I don't have to fast. And then I'm like this year when I'm not any of those things, I'm like, wow, I was really lazy. I'm really lazy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, so all the people, and then we had Sister Bernice, and the content team writes just like incredible content. And then I would say the most powerful thing of this Lent was these surrender stories. I mean, your story yesterday was uh, incredible. Um, it was so good. And all of them have been, you know, very, very powerful. And like the right mix of like different things, like no one had the same story, but all of us have the same stories. Like we've all known people who have gone through mental health struggles and we've all known people who have gone through addiction and we've all known people who have gone through like serious health um, issues or lost a child or almost lost a child. And so, yeah, it, it's just been, the content team did an incredible job of like telling this story alongside like Father Chiswick's story of surrender and and it made my job really easy right because like we were then just able to like curate these stories into something like more visual and um marketable that that we could share on our end but yeah i mean it's powerful you it we have i think 1.6 million people in the challenge um the biggest challenge we've ever like community challenge we've ever had That's and th the most people continuing the challenge so like we look a lot at like the, the mission of Hallow is to help people pray. Like that's our one mission. And so we want people to build habits of prayer, not just like start up one, do one prayer and then they're done. Um, and so this has had the most people of any challenge we've ever done continue through the challenge every single week, uh, mm -hmm. which has been really, really amazing. Oh, I Taylor, I could talk to you all day, honestly. So there's, there's two things I want to pick up on. Um, well, actually three things. Number one is what one thing that I love that I want all my listeners running businesses to take note is how many ways you would multi-purpose content. P.S. Shout out to Sarah, my content editor, did a phenomenal Sarah's job. Sarah's amazing. She did such a beautiful job with our story. Like, like she, I couldn't believe it when I read the script. I was like, you have nailed completely. Like our voice, our tone, how we talk about things. There were very, like hardly any edits. It was, it was remarkable. But it's been really fun to see how you have repurposed, at, you know, and I just want people to, leverage i love the word leverage when you are a busy mom running a business during nap time you need to take one piece of content and make that into five different things so there was obviously our original piece of content on the app behind the paywall so to speak and then you created a reel and you created quotes and you created an ad like it's just always leverage okay the second thing and we're that, actually taking it and we're doing an entire series on, on justice surrender stories after like this summer i think so then the second thing I wanted to hit on there is um, how do you get people to continue a challenge? So I have a lot of people in my audience who run things like challenges, whether they be three days, five days. Uh, I had several people in my community who also do Lenten things. I did a cell phone thing, how to break your cell phone addiction. Well, how do you get people to continue taking action? Mm. Yes. I mean, so part of it starts with really good content, right? I think the surrender stories did a great job of like interjecting like a new thing. So like you look, maybe you fell off with Jonathan and and Father Mike in like Monday or Tuesday. And you're like, wow, like Tammy Peterson and like she had this like really rare cancer. And like I've got to listen to this. And so then you jump back on and then maybe you like fall back in a little bit. Um so there's there's an element I think of like creating like unique things every day so that people don't get our attention spans are like a worse than a goldfish now. And so we get bored really easily. And so by having, you know, so whatever the challenge is, um, like interjecting something new, maybe like halfway through or something exciting halfway through. 
um, that gets people going. And then, yeah, a, a big piece of it is marketing, right? Like we do, we've done a lot of reels throughout this Lenten period. Um, I think the surrender stories have been the most powerful reels, but also Sister Miriam's imaginative prayer has been like absolutely wild. Um, I mean, I was like sobbing with her. I don't know if you listened to it on Wednesday. I'm like crying um, in a public space and like alongside her, who's also crying. And and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like how you market it, too. And then we do do a lot of emails. So if any of your listeners do like email marketing we do, we're very strategic about our emails. We don't oversend emails. Um, we're not emailing people every day, but we're emailing people when there's something critical we want them to pay attention to. And so we do that like throughout Lent. So like we've done it, we've at least done a weekly, sometimes a couple a week um, to highlight just different you know, themes or like specific pieces of content. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 creating like touch points with people and making sure that they feel excited and like renewed. And, you know, we've had like themes for every single week. Um, and then you might've noticed we actually switched the entire thing this week. So we're now focused less on Father Chiswick and on passion, now on Passion Tide. Um, again, not like, not to keep things interesting for people, but like, because they're, you know, Father Chiswick's story was great, right? But like what we're focusing now and in over the next 10 days is the death and resurrection of Jesus. And like, that's what we like want to hundred percent given into. So I hope those that's things true. are helpful. Oh, I could, I, I could literally, we could probably do an entire podcast on email marketing. Maybe I'll invite you back if you're a scheduled <laughs> so we can do that because email marketing is so interesting. I hear from so many people like, no, I don't want to bother my audience. And I'm like, but listen, they also need to know you exist. Like they need mm -hmm. to know that your challenge is running. And I really think it comes down to great content. Like if you can find that voice and you can show people succinctly what you have to offer and how it will change their life. And that takes some time. That takes trial and error. I am sure in the beginning, Hallow didn't get it as, you know, as right or as, as uh, guttural, I guess, as, as you still do. don't get it right. <laughs> But that willingness to, you know, experiment. Okay. We have to talk about Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. So uh, what, what was interesting to me about Pray 40 that you mentioned was keeping people going and you keep people engaged. You do that through your content. You do that through email. You do that through social media. You do that through good marketing. But lead acquisition. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk. Okay. If you'll, if you'll peel, peel back the curtain as much as you're allowed to. Who, who was in the room? deciding what was going to go in that was it 60 second ad at the 30 30 who was in the room deciding what was going to be in that 30 second commercial and how difficult or easy was it to come up with that concept i mean jesus that was really the main the main person <laughs> um that was like one of those things we talked a little bit about like discernment there was so much prayerful discernment that meant went into the decision to even run this ad, right? Like a super, we didn't have a full national ad, but it's still not cheap. And it's like, our big thing is uh, we have to be good stewards of the money that we have, you know, been blessed with as an organization. So we're like, okay, like, do we do this? I think it's only every like seven to 10 years that the Super Bowl falls so close to Ash Wednesday. It's very rare because usually Lent is in, starts in March, right? And the Super Bowl is typically in early February. So like it won't be this way for many, many years. And so, I mean, that was like part of, you know, one of the factors, but it, there was a ton of prayerful discernment that went into even do we do this commercial. And then when, um, you know, we, we actually worked on the commercial without having made the decision to do it. So we were just, um, we've recently gotten more into TV uh, it's, we've, we had our first TV commercial. You might've seen it with like Jonathan in like a bed with someone. We get so much bad feedback for this commercial, but it was, it was quite funny. Um, it was basically like, there was like a four part vignette of like Jonathan as like the phone in different situations. And so like someone would pick up the phone and like press play and then he would like appear. Um, anyway, you can find that on our YouTube. It was pretty funny, but so that was like our first dabble into commercials. And then we had done a handful of others, um, from then. Honestly, like the, the creative process, it was a kind of a, a ride and it it was not easy. It was very difficult because, and we've, we have not found like a creative agency to work with because we're so particular about our brand. Um, that's one thing I think that if I say that we've done a good job at, at anything on the marketing team, it's that 
our brand is like so important to us and how we appear out there, like what you see on our social media page, it's not like messy, it's like beautiful. And we, we, we want our brand to reflect the beauty of the church. And like when you walk into a cathedral and you see this like incredible architecture and beauty, like that's how we like envision our brand looking. Um, and so, you know, we, it, the concept was there to do it in the church. It definitely evolved. I mean, Alex is just a, like a creative genius. Like he, he had so much of it. I think, um, you know, we, we, we put together the script and then we found the church and the church had this like amazing um, holy water font, like in the front, which is where you saw like the reflection from. So it was a little bit, and like, we didn't find that until like the week of. And so like, even the, the whole like creative itself, like evolved. Um, and then it was just going to be like Mark in a church. And then the idea came up, I think it was Alex, or maybe it was our director. We used a Catholic director um, who had done like animated stuff before. And so he, one of his ideas was like, oh, what if we did these like vignettes? And Alex was like, yes, like this is it. Like we're going to do this vignette. So you saw like the family. Well, you didn't see them make the sign of the cross because CBS made it take it out. But you can see it on like the new commercial, the family making the sign of the cross and um, the, you know, old two old men cheering for the high school football team and the soldiers kneeling down, like those things came after, I mean, we were like down to the wire. It was, it was a lot, but um, it, it turned out so beautifully. And I mean, we were just so blessed, like even though it wasn't a national commercial, the press that we got afterwards um, was as if it was a national commercial without having okay. to spend that much. So strategic, like that's awesome. But it was did did it convert? Like, and I don't mean conversion of heart. I mean, like, did people watch the commercial and then go on the app and download Hello? Yeah, they definitely did. Um, more people did on Ash Wednesday, though. So I, more people did. At, we did a press day with Jonathan and Mark in New York. They did. Um, they went on a show called Fox and Friends, and there were more people after that show who downloaded the app than after the Super Bowl. Okay, everybody, I want you to hear that. Okay, everybody, I want you to hear that. That you can pay for a lot of advertising. And it's great. I'm not saying don't do it. But it really depends, I think. Like, like you, I, I wouldn't, I personally would not invest a lot of money in an ad thinking this is going to be the thing that converts. You know? 100%. It's, it's, it's I just think that, that's very, um... it was a snowball. It was very much like, I, I don't think we would have, we were, we were number one in the app store on Thursday morning, Wednesday night. I don't think we would have gotten there without the Super Bowl. So I'll say that that was the little ball that started the snowball that rolled down the hill. Yeah. I think we got, you know, it, it fed off of other stuff so that when Mark randomly went on Colbert on Ash Wednesday night, he talked about the Super Bowl ad, like, because he had still had his ashes on. So like that, it, it one, it's hard to say like what one thing did, but I think it's just, it's so important that like, yes, it's not like one thing. And, and it's not even the, you know, I, I'm a very small in what feels like insignificant part. And like all the team members come together and we all do different stuff. And like, it's not one person, like it's, it's a bunch of different things. And then the grace of God, because honestly, we mess everything up and, you know, he comes in and, and helps us, helps us save, save it. <laughs> no, and I don't know. I have a lot of things in my, you know, 40 years of life and 20 of those being an entrepreneur, you know, like, and I used to really, really, I mean, I still do stress about getting things right. You know, I used to be such a perfectionist. I still am, but it would debilitate me. Like I would not move. And, and I just encouragement to all, like, just, you've got to try and yes, do it excellently, do it with high integrity, but you also have to kind of just be playful and try. And I think that my favorite thing out of this interview um, is just what I'd love people to hear is that the snowball, like think of marketing your business, doing PR for your business as one thing can beget another thing and then another thing and an introduction and then this. And oh yeah, I saw it. like it, it, it not only for the viewer, meaning a viewer or your potential customer needs to see something a lot of times, that's a given, but yeah. also you and the connections you might make and the different things that you grow in and understand about how you storytell 
I think is really important. Taylor, I could honestly talk to you all morning, but is there anything else you'd like to share today that you haven't had a chance to share? Mm. No, I, I mean, I don't just encouragement to, you know, it, it, every you can people see us now here, right? Like with the 700,000 Instagram followers, but they don't see us three years ago or two years ago. And like, it's not, yes, in like today's day and age, time like goes so fast. I don't, I'm like, I'm like, how has it been so long? But you, people forget that there was so that there and that there was so much difficulty in the beginning. And so I want to just give people encouragement that it, it, that if they're in this like really hard place and really hard space, especially in their business or in their motherhood or whatever it is that it, it'll go, you'll look back in four years and be like, wow, how did I even like, how did I get here? Like from there, I thought I would never get out of there. And I, I, you know, I, I can't even remember being in there, but I think, God sometimes allows these places for us to be humble when we can get to that next place, right? Like remember where you came from sort of um, and like what you had to go through. And there's still struggles today. They're just different kinds of struggles. Um, and so, yeah, just like encouragement for wherever you are in this journey, just to keep, keep sticking it through and don't give up and, you know, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> well, I love it. See you on the other side, Taylor. Thank you so much. Where can people go to learn more about you and more about Hello? Uh, yeah, well, um, I, I I, mean, I have like my own personal social media, which is mostly just pictures of my kids. Uh, so, but you can go, you can find Hallow at Hallow app. I sometimes appear on the Instagram lives with Jonathan or we don't do them as much anymore, but um, yeah, I mean, and, and go to the, go to Lisa's link. So hallow.com slash Lisa Canning, uh, get three months free of, oh, perfect. Three months free of the app. Um, and yeah, we have, oh, oh, I should have mentioned. So our next, we have a couple exciting things coming up. So um, Good Friday, we're launching our Divine Mercy Novena with both Jonathan or Father Mike. Um, Father Mike, I love his, well, most because he talks fast and you're like, Divine Mercy, five minutes, cool. Um, but the, the uh, yes, yeah, so we have our Divine Mercy Novena starting on Good Friday. Um, and then starting on April 8th, so that that's that'll be when our Easter challenge lives give everyone you know like a week to overindulge, and then starting on April eighth, um, our Easter challenge is Easter with the early church, and gonna be amazing. Um, the it's being led by Matt Frad actually. Um, he's like very passionate about the early church. Uh, we have a, a member of the cast of the Chosen, so um, doing the readings from the early church fathers. So it's gonna be. Uh, and a priest, uh, Father Malachi. So it's going to be amazing. And Which encourage everyone to join. Number is it going to be? Put your guesses if you're watching this on YouTube. Guess which early or early church. Well, it is. Yeah, I, I I feel like if you know the early church, you'll be able to guess who it is. Oh. Yeah, like like if you know who the key players are in the early church. And who they're like descended disciples of. I'm like, yeah. I do not know my early church. I mean, I, I feel a kin. I, I, yeah, it's going to be like so good. I'm okay. excited. April 8th. Find out April who 8th. from the chosen cast, not Jesus. Yeah. Uh, not but Jesus. Who from the early church is going to be leading that? Mm -hmm. Taylor, thank you so much. It's been such a blessing to spend some time with you. Everybody, three months free on Hallow, hallow.com slash Lisa Canning. Thank you for the gift of that, by the way. It's so, I just, it has been fun to share my personal story and the app with people and hear the stories of transformation. Taylor, thank you. Everybody, thank you. Have a great day. Until next time.